probably you have watched movies or heard stories about creatures hiding in the forest or mountains with magical powers, just like these ones. And if it loses, what right then? Well, if it loses, precious, then we eat it. <laughs> if Baggins loses, we eat it whole. Isn't he beautiful? <laughs> Say hello to Buckbeak. Hagrid? Exactly what is that? That run is a hippogriff. First thing you want to know about hippogriffs is that they're very proud creatures. <laughs> and welcome back to Shivica. Uh, if you've already watched uh, our content and if not, Shivica is a channel where we talk about the Bulgarian treasures, um, our legends, cuisine, folklore, dances, nature and today we're going to talk about magical creatures. People around the world are telling stories about dragons, goblins, half-men, half-animal creatures, um, ghosts and many other magical uh, beings that are mainly aggressive or negative towards us. Well, on our lands we also have some interesting stories, tales about creatures that are not from our world. Today I'm going to share with you legends about the unearthly beautiful Slavic fairies that we call Samudiva, uh, which means uh, desecrators of Christian holiday. Uh, they can also be known uh, with the name um, Vila, which comes from the unbridled force and blizzard. They live in forests, either under enormous trees, uh, abandoned houses or dark caves and are always next to a river or a spring or draw well. During the day they are invisible and hiding, but during the night uh, they go out, dance, sing and make loud noises while they're having bath in the nearest river. The fairies are beautiful, young, uh, unmarried girls that have long hair and enchanted look. In case you meet them, uh, people warn not to look in their eyes because you can die from deadly screams. Uh, however, their dances and songs are considered as the most beautiful and wonderful ones. The Slavic creatures uh, protect each other However, if a man saves uh, their life or do a kindness, uh, they will come and help him uh, in hard times. Now, let's start with the legends and uh, let's hear the story about the shepherds and the fairies. Some medievals lived here for a long time. They took baths and washed shirts and sails in the Vojnishki draw well River Varla and Vila Koštica, playing under the full moon. They did no harm to anyone, living in peace with people, beasts and birds. During the day they were invisible. That was until a shepherd decided to chase them away from that place so that he could graze his sheep in peace and lest the fairies shoot his flock. He found an old, exhausted wolf, killed it and threw it in the middle of the den. There was an unbearable, awful snatch. The fairies were angry, created a great storm and grabbing the shepherd together with his flock, threw him and with terrible force pushed him into the mountain next to the village of Plocha and broke through it. They pulled him back and with renewed force pushed him back into the opposite peak. The flock 
together with the shepherd, became dust and ashes, which the wind carried to our sides. The Samudivas, with great pity, screaming and crying, left their home forever because it was already polluted. They got up, went and settled at a new place where they built a new home, only smaller than the previous one. This story is only an example to not mess up with um, the Slavic fairies. And the second legend that I'm going to share with you is one of the most famous one and it's about the fairies and the woodcutters. A long time ago, a large group of woodcutters set out to cut wood. As night approached, the men decided to spend the night in one place. They let the cattle graze, gathered wood and lit a fire. Everyone knew that until the roosters crowd, no one should hit the road, because the darkness is a kingdom of elves, fairies, goblins and other evil forces that can harm people. Everyone fell asleep, but at dawn, one of the woodcutters woke up and saw that the morning star was in the sky. He thought that they had fallen asleep and woke everyone up. The, they harnessed the kettle and set off, but no one noticed that they did not hear the rooster crowing. They walked and walked and reached a meadow. There, drums and bagpipes were playing. Laughter and cries of joy could be heard. The woodcutters thought it was wedding guests who had been early for the celebration. After looking around, however, they realized that a wild fairy dance was going on in the meadow, but nothing was seen. It was invisible. Everyone was silent. The men drove the oxen, hastened to leave, and for a long time behind them, they heard laughter and cries. They walked a long way, climbed a peak and looked. There was no one behind them. They walked further and descended into a valley. It was quiet, only the river was noisy. They had to cross it, but the animals bowed their heads to drink water. A young man asked his father, Was that wild fairy dance that we heard at the law? Shut up, son. They had just exchanged these words and suddenly in the river, many naked women began to splash, laugh and call out. The animals got scared and the men started to drive them, but the oxen could barely walk. It took a lot of effort for the woodcutters to get out and run away. The caravan set off again, but by morning, all the men were dead. Since then, the morning star has been called the caravan of lies because it often deceives travelers and they got killed. The lesson that we can learn from that story is that you can never escape from the fairies. The next and final legend is actually about a story of a man who lost his leg uh, when meeting the fairies. Let's hear it. It was a summer evening a man was sleeping with his family outside the yard of his house. At some point during the night, he heard carts loaded with people passing down the street. They played with bagpipes and buggos, bass drums, played, laughter and cries of joy could be heard. Suddenly, the festivity died down. The caravan stopped and someone called out, Why did it stop? An anchor broke. Heh. <laughs> there, in the yard, there is an iron. Go get it and go. We are late, ordered the first voice. Two men got off the wagon and went into the yard to the man who pretended to be asleep. They took one of his legs below the knee, put it instead of an iron on the car and drove off with songs and whistles. The caravan was full of Samudivi. In the morning, waking up from sleep, the man realized that he was crippled. He could not move one of his legs, 
the one that the Samudiva had taken from him. It's been a few years. One summer night, the man again slept with his family in the yard. At some point, he heard a caravan coming down the street with songs, cries of joy and whistles. He got scared because he realized that these were Samudivas. He thought that they were coming to take his other leg. He curled up under the rug in fear. When they reached his house, someone from the caravan called out, Hey, stop! We took a piece of iron from here some time ago, but we haven't returned it. We have to get it back. They stopped, got out the car, entered the yard and left the man's leg. Then they went on their way. In the morning, waking up from sleep, the crippled man felt that his leg was in place. He got up and walked normally. The Samudivas had given him back his leg. Well, I hope you enjoyed the stories about the Slavic fairies. Um, there are a lot of other magical creatures uh, on our lands that can be found. Uh, but I will tell you more about them another time. Meanwhile, have a lovely day and see you next time.